On Tuesday, match one between TNT Red Force and combined campuses and colleges ended in a no result at Queen's Park Oval in Port of Spain. Batting first, the home team posted two 46 for four or 44 overs before rain forced an early end to the innings. Captain Darren Bravo hit the first half century of the tournament, stroking 81 of 84 deliveries, while Windy's wicket keeper, batsman Joshua De Silva, added 48. In reply, combined campuses and colleges reached 53 without loss before rain returned, forcing the game to be called off 6.4 overs into the run chase. Four day champions Ghana Harpy Eagles registered their first win of the tournament, beating Windward's Volcanoes by 10 runs. And um, let's hear from Darren Bravo, though, on his uh, TNT uh, match uh, that was rained out and his half it's century. Just a matter. I just spent time out in the middle. Um, I know as long as I, have, I do have the capability to be capitalized in the back end of the inning. So, because my name is you know, obviously being the captain of the team, I have to try my utmost best to be from the front. So all in all, I think it was a decent performance. I think um, the other batters, they would have set a decent platform. But unfortunately, the rain came and sort of cut us short. Yeah, solid 81 there from Darren Bravo at uh, near runner ball pace and uh, getting the TNT Red Force off to a fairly reasonable start. Disappointment for them that the game wasn't concluded because of rain and uh, no result. Just to tidy up that Ghana game with uh, the uh, Volcanoes that they were up against, uh, Tevin Imlak and Kevin Sinclair both made 41 against Rand Johns, 4 for 60 as the Harpy Eagles posted 229 for 9 of their 50 overs. 50s from Alec Athenes with 75 and captain Andre Fletcher 52 gave the Volcanoes hope of reaching the target but Romario Shepard with 3 for 35 along with Niall Smith and Kevin Sinclair two wickets each dismissed the Windward's Volcanoes for 219 in 46 overs. Kevin Sinclair spoke after the match. To be honest, we, we have a, a strong you know, a strong unit. Uh, we look to back each other on and off the field. Um, for me, in this tournament here, once we bat bowl and feel well, we win-win this tournament. So we're just looking to take it one step at a time, game by game, ball by ball, and we will push to, you know, snake this. Just take the title, that's all. <laughs> Confidence there from Kevin Sinclair. And we heard before that from Darren Bravo. This uh, CG United, Mariah and uh, Ricardo, looking to be pretty open. I'm, I'm not sure if you would label any team a clear favourite to win. Yeah, I know I the Jamaicans are defending champions, but they were up to a bad start today. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Very, very open CG United Super 50 Cup. For me, it always dampens my spirit when the weather affects matches. Uh, Darren Bravo, 81 of 84 balls, not out. It was good to see him in his element. It was good to see him putting runs on the board, leading the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force team. And for me, the rain, of course, broke my spirit where that was concerned because even CCC started really, really well when they started to bat. They, they both of their batters um, came out, not out, but of course, there are no results. So that doesn't count. And then where Guyana is concerned, I want to say that when I looked at that match, none of the batters for Guyana had a big score. It was a combination of just, you know, some small scores that got them to that total of 229. However, for the win what they had Alec Atanas getting that 75. So you can you can see two contrasting sort of results. One team just chipping in everybody a little 29, 30, getting the result. Alec Atanas carrying his team on his back, but it was not enough to get them over the line. So good stuff, but I just wish the reins would stay away when the teams have to play. Yeah, just a few things from what you said, Mariah. One of them, every single time I see Darren Bravo bat, especially when he plays an innings like the one he did yesterday, 81 of 84 deliveries um, on a slow turner, um, the type of surface that you have to, in my opinion, be able to bat to really score because um, the ball is not necessarily coming onto the bat in the way that... Um, especially attacking batsmen like it to and Bravo just showing his absolute quality and every time I see him play um, and especially when he makes runs I, I almost get angry Lance and Mariah at the trajectory that his career took because yes. I think as a region we have missed out on a player who could have been genuinely great um, so really disappointing there. Um, Windward Islands Volcanoes, I think, would be extremely disappointed to have lost that match last night. They were very much in it. Alec Athenes 
continues to show that he has the ability um, to be a top level batsman for the West Indies and hopefully I pray to God that his career does not take the trajectory that Darren Bravo's career ended up that a Shimran Hitmeyer's career has taken and, and so many other West Indies batsmen that we can think about in the recent past. Having said all of that, Lance, you said that the Scorpions got off to a poor start. They got off to a terrible start. Um, Leeward Islands, 124 for two, winning the contest comfortably after dismissing the, the, the Scorpions for 123. I want to make a quick point, Lance and, and Mariah. I saw a shot today. It wasn't a shot, actually, but go ahead. <laughs> let, let him finish. From the Jamaica Scorpions captain. Yes. From the captain of the West Indies T20 side. And I could not believe that he played that shot. No, let me say that I've come on this show several times and I have credited um, Rovman Powell for the wonderful work that he's done as skipper, whether he's leading the Scorpions, the Talawas, um, the West Indies in T20 cricket, whatever it is, um, he's, he's captained really well and his performances tend to rise to the occasion when he is leading. But what I saw from him today was extremely disappointing. The Scorpions, 101 for 6 in the 24th over, I think it was, um, on a surface um, that was offering a lot of assistance to the bowlers. And Rovman Powell, I think 13 from about 25 deliveries, chipped down the wicket, completely missed it, and was stomped. No, I was more stomped than he was because I could not believe that he played a shot like that at that stage of the game. At a stage of the game when I would think the plan, the thinking would be, let's bat another 10 to 15 overs. Let's try and get as close to 200 as possible and then push in the last 10. Let's try and get over 200 and see if we can defend that like Guyana did um, yesterday. You're not talking about a knockout game. You're talking about the first game of the tournament. And I just could not believe the shot that Rovman Powell played today. Really disappointing for me. He, he, he was about three meters outside his crease, yeah. <laughs> down the down the pitch. Yeah, that was that was disappointing. Yes, it's a hundred and one for six. Yeah. At a point when you need a platform, you are the leader. You are essentially the last recognized batsman. You have to play more responsibly in a situation like that. Um, and I just hope that we don't see that type of shot again for the rest of this tournament from the West Indies T20 captain because I know that Rovman Powell is better than that. Yeah, mm. and as we get ready to wrap this segment, just um, again, I think the tournament is open. You think it's open. Do you think you have a winner? You think <laughs> Jamaica can defend that title? No. No. Is it because of the, the shot today? The <laughs> 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 Are you judging them based on that one shot? I think I think that is affecting. Can Ricardo. I tell you? I actually like Barbados for this yeah, their one. Their roster All is right. strong. Yes, All their right. roster is strong. Um, the TNT roster is pretty strong as well. Yes, concerned mm -hmm. about the experience in the Barbados bowling lineup, but I think the batting unit is so strong. Um, that they'll be able to defend whatever they put I, up I, on I the board. I actually don't think their bowling is that bad either. No, I don't think it's bad. Yeah. I just think there is um, some amount of inexperience okay. in the bowling lineup. Okay. It's yeah. probably the least experienced Barbados bowling lineup I've seen in a while. Yeah. But it's a, it's a side that I, I think can win this one, and they're my favorites to win it. Mm. All right, well, only time will tell. Let's take a quick break and come right back. <laughs> 